I think coffee is fascinating. Do you need to be educated about coffee? Not necessarily. You should know why it's better to buy coffee fresh, grind it at home right before you make it, and put it in a French press versus buying coffee at the grocery store that has a fancy label on it, grinding it there, and then going home and putting it in your drip maker. You should know why there's a difference there. If you look at these two, this is about, let's say, roughly an equivalent mass of coffee here and here. And the reason we don't grind our coffee for people to take home with them is that in this coffee here, all the surface area has been opened up, right? You need for that surface area to be there for the water to react with it and uh, to get a good extraction from the coffee. But once you've done that, it's also open to the air, okay? And air will react with coffee and stale it. So once it's been ground, especially for espresso, so like super powder fine here, it has a shelf life of maybe like two or three minutes. When it's in the bean, and very little of the coffee is actually exposed to the air, it has a shelf life of a week, sometimes 10 days. Most people get really, really obsessive about coffee, get obsessive on the preparation end of it. They get obsessive, like, they start spending more and more of their paychecks on machines, espresso machines and grinders, and they um, start getting really obsessive and nitpicky about their technique, which is totally justified because uh, espresso preparation is a science and an art that can take decades to master. It's not without reason that they have things like the World Barista Championships. You know, the people who win that, it's not arbitrary. Like there, there really is something that's better about people who spend a lot of time and energy trying to figure it out. A shot of espresso that looks bad almost always is. And what you look for are, um, a lot of times when you walk into a regular coffee shop, the crema, which is the foam that's created by natural occurring oils in the espresso, will be very light in color um, and sometimes non-existent. You'll be able to see the actual liquid through the crema. That's bad. On a good shot, you want it to be sort of mottled light and dark. Um, it's called um, striations or tiger striping. The reason that espresso evinces so much more oil from coffee than drip coffee or French press, for example, will drip with drip the paper will filter out some of the oil. With French press, the oils will come through, but you know it's a water-based extraction. Almost all coffee is. So with espresso, what happens is you grind it very, very, very fine, and then you put it under a lot of pressure. Like um, nine bars of pressure are applied by a pump, and then that pushes the hot water like into the little fragments of espresso bean and pushes oils back out. And that's why with espresso, it's a lot of it's about crema. Um, my boss likes to say a lot of the sensory information of coffee is contained in the crema, and I agree. The crema is what contains a lot of the taste and what distinguishes espresso from um, drip coffee. I train a lot of people on how to make coffee and how to make espresso, and I always tell them that um, espresso, if it's bad, it's died a death of a thousand cuts. It's no one single thing. It's, it's did you grind your beans to order? Are you paying attention to how fine or coarse your grind is? Are you um, distributing the espresso within the basket where it's, it's brewed properly? Are you tamping straight up and down? Are you polishing the puck after you've tamped? You know, there's a, there are a hundred different things you have to pay attention to, and that's part of what makes a good shot of espresso so difficult to achieve. Um, you have to be really detail-oriented, and you have to be really intuitive at the same time. Don't be intimidated, but it's a lot harder than you would initially think. No! <laughs> Hell no! <laughs> beans, coffee beans, people like, because they feel like a grain, I think people feel like coffee beans are like wheat or rice, like you can... You can treat them like that. They're not at all. You have to. I, I tell people you should take care of them like you would some nice tomatoes. Like you would never freeze tomatoes. You wouldn't put them in the refrigerator. You just keep them on your countertop and you'd use them up within like four or five days, right? So it's the same thing. The problems that I know about and can explain to people when they ask why shouldn't I freeze my beans are um, when you take them out of the freezer, they'll attract moisture. So if you are taking beans in and out of the freezer all the time, then you will like attract moisture to the bean and slowly. Or if you leave them in the freezer and open up the door a bunch, then you'll dry them out. Both of these are bad things. If you um, grind beans that are still frozen, you can shatter them, and you won't get a good grind at all. Some of the some parts of the beans will turn literally into dust. Um, it's just it's a bad idea. Refrigerating them is a bad idea. Just keep them on your countertop. I have no beef with Starbucks at all. I don't like their coffee, but. Uh, 
They treat the producers of their coffee relatively well. They pay the farmers relatively well, above market price. Um, they insure their employees. If you want a good cup of coffee, you should go someplace else, is my take on the situation. Although, I mean, there are people who certainly differ with me there. They've gone very far towards drinks that aren't based on coffee. They've gone a great distance towards standardization of their beverages. Um, they use all super automatic machines now, which means that the barista is basically not involved in the preparation of the drink. Um, but that for which they are usually castigated, which is being a big faceless corporation. If you want to hate somebody, they are the wrong address. <sighs> there are things that I, there are orders I would like to make better than other orders. That's, that's true. There's always a great deal of respect um, given to people who order a straight shot of espresso, you know. That's, that's sort of, they obviously like coffee and that's good. When somebody orders a, a soy mocha, they maybe are perhaps less into the coffee than into the things that are going around it. But, you know, I like it when people order whole milk, you know. But I understand that there are people who want non-fat and that, that's the way that that's going to be. And that there are people for who health reasons need to have it. Same thing with soy drinks, you know. I used to be a lot more persnickety about that stuff and I've just come to realize that some people, for ethical or health reasons, are going to order a soy latte, and we just better let them do that. I use a Chemex pot at home, which is kind of a niche thing because you have to boil the water yourself, you have to pour it over yourself, but you can actually get a pot of coffee that tastes really good. And it's, um, they were created, I think, in the 40s by an American chemist uh, who sort of set out, you know, he was familiar with the the properties of what makes a good extraction from chemistry. And so he set out to create the perfect coffee pot. And what he did was, he, it's like an hourglass um, with the top sawed off, basically. So it's a perfect cone, that's what you want for an extraction. It's all Pyrex, the coffee touch, touches nothing but glass, which is good. Um, and they, only Chemex makes filters that fit a Chemex pot, so they're these super high quality paper filters. Well, you know, they're like 30 bucks, they're not even that expensive. Like it takes a couple minutes longer and you will enjoy yourself so much more because it's just, it's like the difference between that and an automatic drip machine is maybe two minutes. And the difference is also between a crappy cup of coffee, perhaps, and an exquisite cup of drip. Like you're going from like, you go to Rolls Royce in two minutes, so it's totally worth it to me. Roasting coffee is like brewing beer or roasting grains or something like that. There are sugars in the coffee that can be brought to a certain level and caramelized. There are other acids in the coffee that you uh, want to sort of like mellow out without destroying. Any of the good coffee roasters will mail order. The other option is of course to roast it at home. It's like home brewing, it's a, it's a growing hobby. It's a good way to get really, really fresh coffee and have ultimate control over what you're drinking. I can mention my favorite other coffee business in the Bay Area, which is Sweet Maria's. Sweet Maria's is located in West Oakland and they're like, like probably, in my opinion, the best um, home roasting supply shop in the country. So they'll sell you a roaster, they'll sell you green beans, they'll sell you a pound or two pounds of green beans, you know, so you don't have to buy a giant sack of the stuff. If you want to start home roasting, go to sweetmaria.com. That's a plug and it's not even for our business. It's sweetmaria.com and it's, it's great, great, great.